I want you all to uh, think about what would it be like if when you went home tonight, just imagine if there was no microwave popcorn, there was no microwave pizza or tortillas or instant coffee. In fact, there would even be a microwave. When you go to watch television, it's no longer connected to the cable or even to a satellite dish and it's a little black box that sits over in the corner. It gets three stations, and only ones that come in are furry and blizzard and fuzzy, and they're in black and white. You know there's nothing wrong with your television or your home has been vandalized. It's 1957. 1957 is a re really interesting year to me because it was not only the year I was born, but it was a year when a lot of things that are in motion now, or in effect now, really started to take uh, effect and just really began. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the technology, politics, some of the entertainment and sports that was going on in 1957. In technology, uh, let's say in the home for instance, washers and dryers, and washers, they didn't have the spin cycle yet invented, or it wasn't on public yet, <coughs> public market, and in fact, to really close out, they had a little thing that they called the squeezer that was two devices on a roller that you had to actually put your clothes through before you uh, put them in the dryer to squeeze them out and rinse them out. Uh, of course, there was no microwave television. I mean, microwave. Well, there definitely wasn't any microwave television. But there was a microwave and uh, television. There was no BET or MTV or... ESPN, I know, or HBO. In fact, the only major television stations were all localized. They were NBC, ABC, and CBS. Uh, some of the uh, actors and stars who were, were big names back then were, of course, Elvis Presley, who when he appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show for the third time, they would only show him from his waist up because it was censored all of the moves that he was doing with his hips. Uh, some of the uh, music back then that was really uh, popular would have been some Motown records, which just got started in 1957 by a gentleman named Barry Gordy in Detroit. Motown had a lot of big hits back then, and they're still kind of popular today. The Tears of a Clown, um, and you know, some of the other rock and roll hits and rhythm and blues songs. <clears throat> in uh, the world, in 1957, in a little town called Little Rock, Arkansas, President Eisenhower had to call out the National Guard because this was the first time that uh, public schools had begun to become integrated. And for fear of uh, the safety of the students, the nine students who were uh, black at the time, to be attending public school, they feared for their safety. They had to actually call out the National Guard and the Army to protect them. <clears throat> also, it was the first year that uh, the USSR, which is Russian now, launched a uh, satellite into space, which began the space race. They also first tested the uh, intercontinental ballistic missile in 1957 as a threat to the United States and Europe that they wouldn't tolerate uh, the increasing nuclear armaments which were beginning and that the United States were placing in Europe. On a lighter note, in entertainment, uh, some of the bigger movies that were shown that year was a uh, little small movie by a guy named Clark Gable. Uh, the name of the movie was An Affair to Remember. Now, you may not remember him for that movie, but I'm sure you all remember the movie called Going with the Wind, which he starred in. You know, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. But, <laughs> but also, a little known fact about Clark Gable is he was married to a lady named Carolyn Lombard, who was born here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, in sports, uh, Rookie of the Year, who actually ran for over 12,000 career yards, 15,000 combined yards for rushing and pass uh, reception. His name was Jim Brown, and he made $12,000 a year. In comparison to today, that's like pennies, you know. Some of the salaries for 
Major League Baseball players averaged at fifteen to twenty thousand dollars compared to now more than five million dollars a year. Well, in retrospect, some of the things that were going on in 1957 are different in technology, they're different in pay raise and scale, and the economy, of course, isn't what it used to be. But no matter how much technology has changed and um, no matter how much um, pay raises or salaries have increased, I think that people are still the same. The people back then still basically want the same things that people today want, is you know, for their children to have more than they did that, and hope that their children will be able to solve the problems that uh, face the world to now, today. So next time you're talking to your parents or your grandparents or maybe your older brother and sister, maybe you can have more of a, of a perspective of what they mean when they say things aren't like they used to be.